It's Overwatch Tuesday as we look ahead to Stage 4 of the Overwatch League with a new patch and a new hero. But before we call our guests and look into our Magic Crystal Ball, let's take a look at the Season 2 highlights. And they get caught in the grab home surge pretty much straight away now. Is there a no charge? Power. Bumper misses the charge! He was trying to find a kill, but then he goes for the shot. Oh, ah, shatter. see he's played Knifey Spoony before. Very cheeky. He has to be careful. He's caught out. Oh. He's, he's down. That's the first pick. And now the rest would fall in. Bumper hits a huge out shatter. And the Vancouver Titans stand on the precipice. They say the North never forgets. But now the North will never be forgotten. Repeating the pathing they've been doing the entire time here. Now the Graviton search comes in. Counter Counter shatter. Ah, that's a Whoa. Whoa. All right. Super. Self destroy. Okay, Titans. Summon suit down. How in the world did they lose him? That's crazy. Slime out of the way, too. Bumper gets the kill on Super, oh but it's all on the shot right now. It's going to be 20 seconds. They're Only Bumper right remaining. Hawksalt just trying to stay on the point, but that's going to be it. The grab from Sinatra comes in, and the shock have done it! They are your stage two champions! Tiam's not just trying to win it out. Barrier denying a lot of silence, but Tiam still managed to find some purpose. No way! Around and no and way! He gets the double tap off the grapple on the striker. Because of Black, we will find a brush. just going to be layered in. Depends by the kill, and actually finally going to be taken down. Gets a follow up again on a rascal. The guard's starting to advance a wrecking ball on the way, but I don't think he's going to arrive in time. He's hooked! And he will not! Reverse sweep! Not gonna happen! The Shanghai Dragons, for the first time, will be your Stage 3 champions! The revamped Shanghai Dragons won the Stage 4, but with all the changes coming up, can they still be the favorites? To break down the patch notes, predict Stage 4, and talk about Sigma is Overwatch coach Ronald Renanthera Lee. How's it going, buddy? Did I say your name right? Uh, it's it's Renanthra. Renanthra. I Renanthra on yeah. Instagram because I couldn't get the I couldn't get the name. From, but um, yeah, no, you know, it's it's better than what AJ usually does. Yeah, I I tried to practice, but it's it is a very hard name to say. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I'll take Ren for short. Okay, Ren. I, I I'll I'll take that. Uh, so we finally are nearing the end of season two with one more stage left, and now that we have three different stage champions, uh, which. We know it means very little at this point. It's time to look into the future, Ron. What are the other teams? Is there any potential for any of the other teams to surprise us at this stage? Um, I think moving forward, they might be uh, eliminating the stage playoff kind of like format. Mm -hmm. um, if there, you know, if there is another stage in stage four, uh, with two 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 lock coming to Overwatch League, I think a lot of the teams that are kind of middle of the pack could be in the running for you know, to kind of snatch that title. Uh, Spark is still going to be good. Um, I think, you know, the Hanjo Spark are very, very good in 3-3, but they were most known for being a very good 2-2-2 team. Um, a lot of their players coming hailing from, uh, you know, both China and Korea were very well known for playing the 2-2-2 style, and I think they were predicted to be one of the stronger teams coming into the Overwatch League. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd like to see them kind of take the reins back and, and be that 2-2-2 monster we've predicted them to be. Um, on top of that, Valiant uh, were always a part of stage playoffs last year in the inaugural season during the 2-2-2 meta. Mm -hmm. uh, they're on up time now and I only expect them to go higher. So my money would go on those two to kind of climb through the ranks as the format changes. That is very exciting. Uh, we've mentioned 2-2-2 a bunch of times already, but for those squad mates who are new in chat, maybe new to Overwatch, can you quickly tell us what 2-2-2 means exactly? Yes. So, I mean, if you played any other video game like League of Legends or something, they have what is pretty much a roll queue where before you get into game, you've already predetermined what position you're going to be playing. Um, they, you know, like in soccer, you have your goalkeepers or your forwards or your midfields. Um, in video games, you have, or Overwatch specifically, you have your tanks, your damage, and your support. Before, when you load into a game prior, you'd have to kind of, you'd have 40 seconds to meet new people and kind of discern what you're going to be playing and what everyone is comfortable on. That usually led to a lot of chaos, a lot of people not getting what they wanted or having to be flexible um, to kind of raise your chances of winning, even if it meant you couldn't play what you wanted. But now with DT2 lock, it means even if you woke up in the morning, you really wanted to play Hanzo and you got into a rank game, you wouldn't have to compromise between playing your favorite character and like, optimizing your chances to win for somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, so now that Rolock is in, 
it means that also everyone gets a separate rating for each of those roles. So you can properly evaluate your skill across damage, tank, or support. And that's been a lot of fun for me to tinker with on PTR so far. That is amazing. I can't wait to try the new system. But with this system, it seems like Blizzard is almost trying to control and restrict the metagame. Uh, but of course, there are benefits to a, systems like, a system like this, especially in the pro scene. But what are the pros and cons uh, that you see, especially for rank players, regular rank players like me and you? So I, I actually really disagree when people say that Blizzard's trying to artificially restrict or control the metagame. Mm -hmm. I think that eventually this is a model we're going to be moving to regardless. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, Definitely the advent of GOATS was a pushing factor for the change, but I, I do agree with what Jeff Kaplan said in his developer update that um, you know these constraints and stuff actually breed creativity and diversity. Mm -hmm. um, I think especially with Sigma dropping today on uh, PTR, I think we're going to see a lot of experiments uh, with proper comps. And since 222 has been kind of the meta in the big, you know, a couple of years ago, we've gotten quite a few new releases that changed the game and. Um, you know, people will cry and say, oh, you know, my creativity, how can I play triple DPS or three tank? I, I think over time we'll get hero releases that will lend themselves to that sort of style, kind of like aggressive supports to, to make um, it feel similar to a triple DPS comp or kind of uh, more aggressive tanks to, to kind of facilitate that as well. And over time, as the hero pool expands, um, we'll see a lot more diversity and difference in play styles, even within a 2-2-2 restriction that will be overall healthier and, and we'll be looking back i think a few years from now being like oh those were those were the dark times i can't believe we were playing ever without this restriction yeah and um you already mentioned the changes uh there was a bunch of changes mostly quality yeah. of life uh but there was a lot of adjustments to briggs numbers who mm -hmm. we knew was a major player in goats who got hit with the nerf hammer, if any, and how do you think will the entire meta be affected with the current changes? So I actually think this recent patch by Blizzard did a really good job of not hitting anybody in particular too hard. Mm -hmm. I think they did actually a better job of buffing characters up to kind of um, give them a role or hopefully uh, give them an edge when it comes to 2-2-2 and give them some playtime. Uh, Brigitte was nerfed really, really heavily in the GOATS meta because like she's uh, was so overbearing with the other two supports that they had to go and lower her numbers. Mm -hmm. But because of that, if you were to play her in a 2-2-2 composition, she just felt awful. It was a disaster. Um, and now they've changed her style to be more in line with the other healers, make it more so that she's less tanky, less brutish, and more of like someone that could deal a lot of healing in a short period of time and give her that kind of anti-flanker niche that she was always supposed to have. Um, so that's another added benefit of 2 2 as well, is that they could look at less overall variables and kind of balance the game uh, a little bit easier because you know that like you won't have massive effects where Brigitte will allow three or four tanks again. Mm -hmm. um, she'll always be restricted to a 2 2 uh, framework, which is good when you're looking at a game with like 30-something heroes, releasing more every time, and then the players are always finding new ways to kind of gimmick your system. So it sounds like Blizzard just really hated GOATs implemented the roll lock and was just like, we're not going to ever have this meta again. Let's get rid of how Briggs kit is. I mean, I, I, I really don't think it was like just goats entirely. Mm -hmm. I, again, I, I do agree it was a factor, but um, they've been, they said they've been working on this for over like a year and a half. And this has been something people have been asking for just because they wanted to play their characters and have competitive games before goats happen. I, I know I was a really vocal advocate for a roll queue um, before goats started catching on it's it was pretty much an inevitability i feel and i don't think it was just like oh goats goats is the nuclear reason that, that like broke the game we had to <laughs> this this tiny trial team broke a billion dollar industry um i i, I don't think so i think it, it was coming and if we didn't get it as soon as we did now we would still get it in like another year or a half ah uh, that's that's perfect again as i said very excited for that um but there are a lot more things again that are new that are coming up for the stage four including the matches of the week the 1v1 showdowns and the league picks where you can get your esports tokens but of course one of the main things that i am the most excited about is the 31st hero and the first talent tank sigma as we know yes. very little of him 
and his kit at the moment, let's speculate. What gap would he fill currently that does not exist in this roster? And what do you think the Sigma's balls do? So, <laughs> so he, he's a hulkish chat of a man. He has these giant World of Warcraft style shoulder pads and mm -hmm. he's He's, he's just he's a big boy and I think um, we're in due time for another tank hero mm -hmm. uh, I would not be surprised if he's a tank I'm pretty sure it, it's it's pretty much 99% confirmed um, fun facts on the Twitter last night I think the uh, voice actor his name is Boris Heeland I think or mm -hmm. something like that uh, correct me if I'm getting that wrong but he confirmed that he's Dutch so nice we got some more uh, global re representation um, but this this Dutchman is uh, an astrophysicist, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. and um, that that origin trailer of his was absolutely uh, amazing. amazing. Uh, hats off to Boris; he he did a super awesome job, and um, you know that the idea of kind of him playing with gravity and and the way that impacts time and stuff like that uh, have me feel as if he's going to be uh, maybe warping projectiles or bullets towards him. I don't think. Blizzard is going to add more CC to the game. Mm -hmm. I think they're kind of happy with the amount that there is now, and um, they want it to be less MOBA focused and bring it back a little bit to the FPS roots. Um, they mentioned this kind of in a few developer updates in the past where CC is something that is fine and kind of important to have in a game to keep certain things in check, but having too much makes it very, very annoying when you start getting like stunned every three seconds, right? Mm -hmm. So I think if there is kind of a, a theme with the gravity and that in place, they wouldn't make it so you slow other people. They'd probably make it so you would bend projectiles around you like Angelina Jolie and Wanted or, <laughs> um, you know, especially as a tank. Yeah. Uh, ways to mitigate damage could be creative. And I think uh, hopefully he'll open up some more aggressive play styles or something new that aren't just, you know, holding up a shield and blocking damage that way. Yeah, I really, really want him to be able to stop bullets like Neo and then return it back <laughs> to people because it sounds like it would be right in his case. Yeah, that would be super, super awesome. Like yeah. Instead of eating with Defense Matrix, you, you hold them in place and then mm -hmm. send them right back. That'd be super, super cool. That would be something else. Thank you so much, Ron, for dropping your Overwatch knowledge, but unfortunately, we are out of time. Yeah, it's all right. Well, thank you for having me. Hopefully, I'll be back in studio sometime soon to, uh, you know, enlighten you more with my Overwatch uh, depth of knowledge.